I think that retail investors get a really bad rap. We do plenty of surveys on retail investors across brokerage platforms, and many retail investors are those long-term investors who are investing to build that nest egg or build, you know, or to invest for retirement, if you will. Um, they're the type of investors that may check their account often, but they don't, you know, necessarily buy or sell things as quickly as you know they're portrayed in the media. So we have to t also understand, you know, the crowd that we're talking to here. There will be speculators in any age group, and you know, younger investors again have a higher risk appetite, so they're willing to take on more risk. Uh, but at the same time, we have those long-term investors, and we have those customers who step in and say, "Look, I just want to make money over time so my kid can go to college, or so I can buy a house 10 years down the road." So that being said, I mean, we are talking to different camps here. In terms of risk management, we really told our customers to lean on the numbers here. Know your entry points, know your exit points. I mean, along with the great advice Jay shared about knowing your goals and knowing your time horizon, use that to guide you and then lean on the numbers and be really honest with yourself too. I mean, a lot of people say that they get into investing to you know, make money and be rich and that's all good and well, but can you narrow that down a little bit? Why do you want to be rich? Why, you know, what do you expect to do with your money in the next five, 10, 15, or 20 years? Because believe it or not, that dictates where you put your money. So we're trying to approach it from a psychological angle as well. You know, telling people that there are different ways to invest, that, you know, your friend isn't exactly like you. So, you know, it's great to have friends and follow what they do, but at the same time, you know, know yourself and understand that you deserve a portfolio as personal as you are. and. You know, at the same time too, I mean, teach them how markets work and teach them that ups and downs are normal. But the best investments you can make over time, you know, according to history, are the ones you make when the market is most painful. So I know that that's a big mouthful and there are plenty of different angles I can talk about from there. But, you know, we approach it in a psychological way and then we try to get the investor to connect to what they need and then we guide them from there. Yeah, and let me just expand on that because in the current market environment, you talk about the ups and downs of trading, Cali. Uh, we've seen vicissitudes of a magnitude that I haven't seen maybe ever, and I've been following the market somewhat closely over the last two decades. Jay's been on, in this longer than I have. I'm just wondering how your approach is, especially being a bit more millennia, millennial uh, focused on um, exactly how to navigate this because a lot of people trade based on their first bear market. And for a lot of people, you know, you can count the pandemic as part of that, but it was so quick. It was almost a, a non-event because we were right back up at highs within, I don't know, six months or so. I, how, how are you and your clients and basically your generation uh, viewing the markets right now? And how are you trying to shore up a, a little bit more trust uh, that in the long term things are probably going to be just fine? Yeah, well, to be fair, I'm going to say something, uh, you know, on the account of all millennials and Gen Z's <laughs> out there. We may not have been investing for so long, but we have seen some stuff in our lifetimes. I mean, I'm an older millennial and my parents were both laid off from their, job their jobs during the great financial crisis. Um, certainly didn't have an investment portfolio out there, but I felt the financial effects of it. So I think that the criticism of millennials and Gen Z not seeing a lot of market market volatility is a bit unfair there. Um, not saying that you said it, Jerry, no, but, but yes. I get it a lot, and it's just it just you know a little a little you know off in a way. Um, but you know, thinking back to where we stand, you know, how we're seeing these markets, I like to lean on the data. I love looking at how markets have reacted, you know, relative to history and. You know, just how long it takes markets to rebound because, you know, the average investor, if you ask them how they think the stock market has acted over time, they probably say something like this. But if you look at the line chart, it's like this, the call option on society. So, you know, we try to remind our investors of that. We try to, you know, tell them about the classic investing advice, invest in what you know, you know, invest you know, based on what you want to do with your money. Um, you know, a lot of investors are really receptive to that because from a millennial and Gen Z perspective, we just want to participate in society. We want to do, you know, as well as our parents did and more, and we're trying to find ways to do it. You know, investing is one of those ways that you can grow your wealth, and um, we're just asking how to do it. Nobody's really answering our questions. Um, but we also bring a psychological component to the table as well. You know, we want to invest our money, but you know, we care about our wellness and we don't want to drive ourselves insane trying to make this money. So I also like to emphasize that, 
you know, no investment strategy is worth your sanity here. And if you're not a day trader, which many people aren't, then that's completely fine. You still have a way to invest.